A short distance across town on Van Ness Ave, Hardy's original shop, Realistic Tattoo Studio, established in 1974 with the revolutionary guidelines of doing custom work only by appointment, still flourishes. It's now manned by two associates who both previously worked at Erno's, each in his mid-twenties. Their youth and output of work qualify them as young Turks, the tattoo tag team of Corbin and Higgs, Fred and Dan. Corbin's style tends toward finesse. Higgs is strictly industrial strength. Being positioned in Hardy's shop puts them in line for the kind of attention and challenge which helps in achieving big success in the business. It appears each is so destined. Higgs and Corbin are as committed to getting tattooed as they are in doing them. Each will eventually wear full body suits reflecting their own unique personal aesthetics. Fred is seriously into religious imagery, primarily Christian. Dan prefers juxtaposing contemporary pop culture icons with traditional Americana tattoos. Both have a highly articulated verbal style to match their strong, outgoing personalities. Highly motivated, opinionated, and dedicated, they're a significant part of the fantastic new generation of young tattooers who will shape the direction of tattooing in the years to come. Some of the best of whatever's new in the 90s will be done by Corbin and Higgs. Your skin can bank on it. You know, people used to always harp about, you know, the American style of tattooing the way it was in the 40s and 50s, about how people would have all these conflicting images with no, like, fluid underlying, you know, consistency to tie them all together. Well, what the fuck's wrong with that, you know? That, to me, is, is intriguing. When you look at a person's body, it's just this total mishmash of things that don't go together and all these contrasts and stuff. I think that's cool, you know? That's the way I want to get tattooed. Because I, I just, I like all the, you know, you know, you put the clown next to the Jesus head with the shark and the hot stuff devil and the army tank and, you know, the, the black cat, just all mixed up. I think that's cool, you know. That's how I want to look, and that's kind of what I'd like to put on people if that's what they want. I think people, you know, be more into that in the 90s, I guess, with the proper promotion and all that. And I think a lot of people have to be told it's okay, you know, to get stuff that doesn't necessarily go together because once you tattoo it on your body, it does go together, you know, whether it goes together or not, it's got to go together, it is together. Fortunately, I live in San Francisco, and um, there's a lot of really open-minded people here, and the more open-minded people you get, the more creativity that's involved in the thought process of getting a tattoo. Lots of people um, are into custom tattooing here, and not that there's anything wrong with the good old stock design, but when you have somebody that says, okay, I want to get a tattoo that nobody else has, that automatically means, well, you're going to get to do a tattoo that you've never done before. So that keeps the job interesting. What's unique about San Francisco is it's, al it's always had that bohemian style to it. You know, people have always been somewhat radical or more progressive here than they are other places. The same with Amsterdam or New York or you know, a place like that. So therefore, you get to do a lot of really, you know, wild tattoos. I've noticed that when you go to a convention and people say, hey, where do you work? And you say in San Francisco, they go, oh, you get to do all the crazy stuff. You know, so I've kind of learned what that meant. You know what I mean? It means that you get to do a lot of stuff that, you know, for example, like there's, uh, there's probably more people in San Francisco that'll get a tattoo on the side of their head or, you know, something maybe coming down off their hand than there would be in, in uh, Iowa or Florida because it's more conservative there. I guess my philosophy on aesthetics with tattooing is I, I like to do the ones that I really like. I don't like doing the ones that I don't like that much, and I won't do the ones that I don't like at all. <laughs> so that's my philosophy on it. <laughs> I'd rather do a dagger with a banner going around it that says death before dishonor than this totally, you know, too conceptual, too abstract tattoo design in some case. You know what I mean? It takes more than a pencil to know how to draw. It takes more than a tattoo machine to know how to tattoo. There's a big difference between putting a tattoo on yourself once and tattooing people forever for a living. There's a big difference. Some, some people shouldn't have a tattoo machine in their hand. You know? Some people shouldn't have a scalpel in their hand. <laughs> you know? Some people shouldn't drive a muni bus. <laughs> it depends on what you're into. You know. Because of the format being very unique, with, with it being an appointment-only studio and stressing that 
designs would be originated for each each person coming in uh, it's it's still a unique shop I don't know of any other studio in in the Western world that does that or any place actually that does that so uh, the people that have come in there to work with me um, are you know into that mode and uh, and have responded of course differently to different customers now there's a whole there's a whole set of people there that are getting a different look than, of course, we're getting 10 years ago or, or 15 years ago. That, that yeah, studio has been there for 16 years, and okay. so uh, there's, there's been a real range of people, and now, now Fred Corbin and uh, Dan Higgs are, are doing this kind of new, uh, kind of a gods and gangsters style, you know, this weird power pop look, and uh, a lot of these cultural icons all mixed up, and it's, it's real. It's real different. It's a great shot in the arm for me. I mean, this just this trip here, these two weeks that I've been in town, there's been this fantastic kind of energy and um, a new exchange of ideas. I felt a sort of a turnaround in my own work just this period. So that's what's exciting. I kind of I go away from here, and then when I come back, I plug into a new. It's like the record is played onto a new point, you know, and I drop into this new situation and and pick up on things that uh, that these other people are doing. Well, I think a lot of people my age that are tattooing now grew up on the uh, late 60s and the 70s uh, Marvel comics, you know, which were pretty out of control then. A lot of, you know, bizarre ideas and a lot of bizarre artwork and just the whole weird 70s culture, you know, the bizarre television, bizarre clothing, just weird food, you know, and just just completely fucked up culture, you know, sort of the backlash. Beaver show, I mean, what I'm into you know. now is just like juxtaposition of all these different ideas. You know, there's strong Americana elements, you know, Coleman, Collins, dice, cards, snakes, anchors, you know, I'm into all that shit, but there's definitely sort of a looser kind of no holds barred kind of element, you know, I'll just, if, if people will let me, my drawings get, you know, fairly out of hand, and usually the, the what's in question the most is if they'll really, you know, when they come to see the finished drawing, are they really going to let me put this on them, you know, because it's like, it's stupid, you know, and it's crazy, and it's just like all over the place, you know, but that seems to be what people like about it, you know, they're like, wow, that's, that's nuts, you know, I'll get that, because nobody else will, you know, it's just, you know. Higgs, the transplanted Easterner, enjoys the Frisco tattoo scene, but takes exception to his colleagues here who decline to do American pop icon tattoos, like Yosemite Sam, Popeye, Black Panthers, and Tasmanian Devils in the name of higher art. San Francisco's unique. San Francisco's unique, and, you know, sometimes it just gets a little misguided. But then again, I mean, some of the main purveyors of, of total art snobbishness aren't from anywhere near San Francisco, you know? And I'll name names just because I feel strongly. You know, Shotzi with his, like, anti-Black Panther campaign of a few years back and refusing to do hot stuff, so I think that's totally bogus, you know? If that's what he wants to do, that's fine. But to me, a Black Panther tattoo or a hot stuff tattoo, that embodies just the soul, you know, of tattooing, you know, and they are American icons, and I'm an American, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not Japanese. The koi fish has no real impact on me. The hot stuff devil does, you know, and I think he's as relevant as, as a Japanese only demon, you know, to an American. And, to just, and you know, these people, it's such a, it's a, such a perfect tattoo, you know? That little devil is drawn so perfectly to be tattooed. You can shade them out strong, solid colors. I would much rather wear something like that than some like, you know, spirograph snot stuff that doesn't look like anything or have any, it, it doesn't mean anything. I'm into the whole symbolic thing, you know? I worked on the East Coast. On the East Coast, you tattoo roofers. I mean, you do you do these people out here too, but you also have a lot more, you know, like art artist types and stuff who are getting tattooed and they're exploring ta being tattooed as a way to express themselves, whatever. On the East Coast, it's more of a working class game. You know, you're tattooing construction workers, roofers, merchant seamen, uh, go-go dancers, prostitutes, you know, just street scum thugs you know <laughs> and you do you know a lot, roofers get yosemite sams roofers are into warner brothers cartoons you know and the, the the army reserve guys from indiana they still want black panther tattoos and stuff and i have done a lot of them and i'm not sick of doing them you know because they can always be taken one step further you know i do i do a mean tasmanian devil you know i am proud of my tasmanian devil tattoos and if somebody wants to get a Tasmanian devil tattoo and they're enthused about it, 
I will match their enthusiasm and I'll put a, a Tasmanian devil on him probably better than anybody else around. Because a lot of people, you know, you a, a lot of people Greg. think like, oh, the Tasmanian devil, that's easy money. I don't have to put any heart or soul into it. Well, you know, if, that, if that's a, a powerful, you know, symbol to that guy, if, if that Tasmanian devil represents to him the way he'd like to be, you know, reckless and vicious and strong and overpowering or whatever it is that he wants to emulate about the Tasmanian devil, you know, you got to give him a good tattoo. He deserves it as, as righteous and as beautiful and as well executed a tattoo as the guy that wants the, the total spiritual dragon essence of knowledge pearl trip on his back, you know?